One of the many great things that ancient India was famous for was its steel. The steel here was called as Ukku or Uruku in several South Indian languages. However, it seems the Europeans were not able to pronounce it well, so they preferred calling it as Woods. It is ironic that not too many records are available documenting the process of Woods production. Iron has been used since a long time in India. There is even a mention of King Dhritarashtra in the story of Mahabharat, where he crushes an iron statue of Bhim. Wood's steel was highly prized across several regions of the world over two millennia, and the products made of this Indian steel came to be known as Damascus swords. It is mainly the European travellers who left detailed accounts of this. They observed the manufacture of steel in South India by a crucible process. They noticed this at several locations including Mysore, Malabar and Golconda. By the late 1600s, shipments running into tens of thousands of Woods ingots were traded from Coromandel coast to Persia. This indicates that the production of Woods steel was almost on an industrial scale in what was still an activity predating the Industrial Revolution in Europe. Indian Woods ingots have been used to forge Oriental Damascus swords, which were reputed to cut easily even gauze kerchiefs. If you try such things with today's swords, it may take you a while to do so. Damascus swords were found to be of very high carbon content of 1.3 to 1.8% and the best of these were believed to have been made from Indian steel. In India, till the 19th century, swords and daggers of Woods steel were made at centers including Lahore, Amritsar, Agra, Jaipur, Gwalior, Tanjore, Mysore and Golconda, although none of these centers survive today. There are even older records praising the Woods steel. The Greek physician and historian Theseus, in his book Indica, written around the late 5th century BC, mentions that the wonderful swords of Indian steel were presented to the king of Persia. In another record, the import of Indian iron and steel to the Roman world is suggested by Pliny's Natural History, which refers to iron from the Ceres. Ceres was another name for Cheras from the southern kingdom of the Sangam era from 3rd century BC to 3rd century AD. The first explicit documented evidence of the export of Woods steel from South India to make Persian Damascus blades comes from Jean Baptiste Tavaknia, who in 1679 mentions a trade in steel from former Golconda near Hyderabad in Andhra Pradesh, which was the only sort which could be made into Damascus blades by Persian artists. Very few excavations of Woods production sites have been conducted so far. Sites as old as 250 BCE have been found in Tamil Nadu. As per the late Professor R. Balasubramaniam, Woods steel is primarily iron containing a high percentage of carbon. Specifically, Woods should be used to refer to high carbon alloy produced by the crucible melting process. Woods steel is produced by heating iron along with other materials in a closed clay crucible, enabling the iron to pick up carbon and then it is melted. This solidified iron lump that takes the shape of the bottom of the crucible is the Woods cake. To process Woods steel cakes into swords, the discs were first cut longitudinally and then subsequently passed through several stages of processing, including beating, tempering, sharpening and finally ending with the surface etching. The ancient Indians solved the dual challenges of specialized steel production as well as subsequent processing into fine cutting objects. The Woods steel cakes were manufactured in the Deccan and shipped to steel production centers all over India, as well as the Islamic world during the medieval period. There were two methods for producing goods. These were labelled as the South Indian process and the Hyderabad process respectively. In the South Indian process, the crucibles heated a combination of wrought iron and wood charcoal from the Avaram and Eruku flower plants. The cake production process took about 6 hours to complete. The thing that you need to notice here is that both of these plants are also important from an Ayurvedic perspective. As per the late professor, there are multiple examples of Indian metal technology being copied by the British without crediting the original source and later getting patented in Europe. A famous instance of this being William Champion's method for extracting zinc. Once these Indian methods were perfected in Europe, the British systematically terminated the original practices in India. 
the Woods steel manufacture was eventually banned by the British Raj in the 18th century. Exports decreased gradually and the native practices became extinct by the beginning of the 20th century. A magnificent 2000 plus year old Indian tradition was extinguished and the traditional iron and steel workers, the gems of India, lost their livelihoods. Surprisingly, some people say that this technique of woods production is still prevalent in villages of South India. These iron workshops are called Irumbu Pattarai. 